Welcome, everyone. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song. <laughs> Welcome to Unity of Wilmington's hybrid service. Welcome to you out there in Cyberland, and welcome to all you wonderful people sitting here. I'm Lainey Mauger, and I'd like to introduce our participants today. We have Katie Dees on the piano. We will have Heather Seltzner close <laughs> singing to us. We had the celebration singers, and we will have Dr. Herbert Harris speaking to us shortly. So I'd like to welcome you all here, and can we begin by saying our prayer of believing. There is one power, and one power active in the universe and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. And now for our three affirmations. I am a beloved expression of God. I am here for a holy purpose. I am in the right place at the right time right now. So now, Heather. <laughs> Let the water carry you, 
let go of the shore, float into the mystery. No need to make a plan, your heart will be your compass. Just lift your sails in faith and trust that you will Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go of the shore, float into the mystery. Let go of the shore and let the water carry you. Let go shore float into the mystery float into the mystery thank you heather now i would like to introduce dr harris Dr. Harris is a native of Wilmington. He's a graduate from Columbia University and is a retired attorney. He's been a unity practitioner and has pursued unity studies under Dr. Eric Butterworth while he was in New York City. Forever a student, Dr. Harris has actively pursued his religious, esoteric, philosophical, and metaphysical studies throughout the world. He's lectured at numerous organizations and churches, including here in the past, and will do so in the future. Dr. Harris, the platform is yours. Wow. Let me get all of my stuff together here. You know, I'm uh, in this day and age where all the older people are learning, having to learn how to push the buttons and do things like that. Let me make sure I've pushed everything and everything is rolling. Wow, you all look beautiful today. Man. Well, one, I want to thank the board of directors. Thank each and every one of you for having me back again. My good friend Lanny, we've, we've known one another for so many years. And coming back and speaking here, it's a lot like, really a lot like coming home. You know, today we're going to talk about a topic. Oh, let me recognize my beloved. Sandra Spaulding Hughes, please stand, honey. <laughs> you know, Sandra's a former city council member and a former member of the House of Representatives, and I think she's very glad to be out of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Our topic for today is, really, is it time to make a new start? And the reason I chose that topic is, I think that many of us are going through a lot of stuff right now in our lives where that question is in our minds. It's like, hmm, what shall I do next? Before I get started, I'd like to talk a little about my style. I like to use uh, the mastermind principle. Think about this. When two or more gather on one accord, I am among them. And so whatever we do here today, we're going to create it together. The great thing is that if you leave here saying, wow, that was great, then I'll say, man, I did a good job. And if you don't, then I'll say, man, you guys messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it really works out. I also like to use uh, the power of affirmations. You know, in the Unity Church, affirmations are, are a way to transform ourselves, to assert who we are. And so I like that interaction. And so I thought of an affirmation. I feel great today. So let, let's try that together. I'll say it, then you repeat after me. I feel great today. I feel great today. Now that sounded pretty good. Yeah. All right. How about loving? I feel loving today. Together. I feel loving today. Woo. Love that. So affirmations are great ways to do things. Also call and response. All of these are like learning tie downs, you know. In the old days as a teacher, you know, they made you go over it over it time and time again. Now you don't have to know anything. You just look it up on Google. <laughs> so 
So call and response, very popular in our church, and it says, if I say, how do you feel, you say, great. So let's try that. How do you feel? Great. Okay. Let's do loving. How do you feel? Loving. Woo, okay. Give yourselves a hand. So where we are right now in our lives, our personal lives may be, let's just say, challenging. <laughs> Many of our businesses are, as the young man said during Katrina, in a mess. <laughs> and believe it or not, some of our relationships are less than fun, <laughs> OK? So the good news is this. Whatever our present circumstances are, whatever our situation, we don't have to stay stuck. We can change it. So if whatever you're facing in your life, if you want to create the life of your dreams, if you want to live your desires, then you're in the right place. We have a, a book we're going to do afterwards, a book signing, and our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. Maybe, maybe you could ha hold it up. I forgot to hold it up. But we'll be outside. <laughs> you know, you can't do everything. <laughs> but uh, a lot of what we do now, we sort of refer to the laws in the book. We're going to do a little book signing afterwards, and afterwards we'll make sure to contribute a part back to the church. So I want to start with a quote. Guy Stanley said, nothing in the universe can stop you from letting go and starting over. Operative part, letting go. No matter what your situation is right now, you can change it. The second law of success is the law of change. The scripture says, be not conformed to this world but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that is Romans 12th chapter, second verse. So be not conformed to this world means that you don't have to stay stuck in whatever situation you're in right now. Coming out of this pandemic, a lot of us are stuck in a lot of stuff. We don't have to stay there. You don't have to stay stuck in a relationship that's not working. You don't have to stay stuck in a job that you hate. I guess you can't divorce your family, but you, don't, you can give living to access. <laughs> there are a lot of people, you know, like, hmm, <laughs> make an appointment. <laughs> Be sure to call before you come. <laughs> so this idea, be, be you transformed by thinking a new thought about yourself, about your source, critical, whose you are. It's not just who you are. It's whose you are. By thinking a new thought about your source, you can transform your life. Where we are right now, whatever that's going on in your life, is a result of four things. Our thoughts, our emotions, our habits, and our relationships. Our thoughts, the first law of success says, a mind. You know, the Bible is written, ladies, I apologize. You know, I didn't write it. <laughs> and I mean, everything is about he. You know, the, the scripture says, a man shall have whatsoever he thinks in his heart. What about the ladies? So we, I like to change it a little bit. A person <laughs> shall have whatsoever they think in their hearts. That's the first law of success. So your thoughts are critical, but there's a duality of the thoughts. It's not just the rational thought. But that scripture is powerful, whatsoever you feel about that thought. And so the emotional aspect of a thought, the emotional aspect of everything, every thought you have is what really makes it manifest. Because the emotions give you the vibrations, and we live in a world of vibrations. You know, I, I, I'm, I, I'm a physicist. That was my, my degree, and I majored in physics. I, I worked in it for three years until I realized I hated it. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> and you know, one day I just, I got my check. You know, now I, know, I don't know anybody that's ever left their job without picking up the check. You got to really be mad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I got my check and I got out of there and bought me a guitar. <laughs> Changed my whole life. 
But how you feel about the thought is critical. The vibrations that we send out. In physics, E equals MC squared, Albert Einstein. Energy, vibration, equals mass, which is manifestation, times the speed of light squared. So then mass, manifestation, is equal, directly related to energy, vibration. Generally, vibration is expressed in our level of desire. If you really want something badly enough, do you notice you get it? I mean, as a young man, I wanted a car badly enough, and I got it. I guarantee you, every one of you in this room has wanted something badly enough. And when that desire was there, it, you got it. And that's that relationship. So this idea of feeling, is vibration, is critical in bringing about the life you desire. Our habits. Our habits can mess us up or lift us up, one or the other. And our habits are really how we execute our life, how we do what must be done. In the beginning, we create our habits. You notice in the end, our habits create us. We often tell the story of a Thanksgiving, a little girl says to her mom, the mom's preparing the, the ham, and she cuts the ends off and puts it in the oven. The little girl says, Mom, why do you do that? She said, because my mother did it. So later that day, grandmother came over, and she asked grandma, Grandma, why, why do you cut the ends off the ham and put it in the oven? She said, because my mother did it. So they go out to the nursing home later that evening, the great-grandmother, and they say, great-grandma, why did you cut the ham, ends off the ham to put it in the pot before you put it in the oven? She said, because the pot was too small. <laughs> <laughs> so in habits, we do things that are so ingrained in how we do stuff. And many times, when we talk about making a new start, it's questioning those habits. And then finally, the fourth element of where we are right now is relationships. It's really how we interact on all levels. And it's not just relationships with people. See, relationships are powerful. You better have a good relationship with your source. I don't know how to deal with an atheist. You know, I don't know who you call when you're in pain in the, in the dark of the night. I don't, I don't know. I don't know any atheists. But you got to be clear on your source, the relationship with your source, relationship with yourself. If you don't like yourself, if you don't love yourself, if you don't feel good about yourself, everything else is being added on a sinking sand. You got to love yourself first. Relationship with others, now that's important. The mastermind principle requires us that when two or more gather on one accord, I am, and I am is the making power, the power to get things done. I am among them. But the other side works too. You get three, three or more people who are on separate accords, and I am works then. I am creates confusion. Then you have to have a proper relationship with things. The Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. Money, materiality can be a powerful servant, but a terrible master. So it's these relationships when we talk about all these things come together to let you know and to really determine who you are and where you are in life. On a big scale, our life, lives basically operate on choice, on change, on principle or order, and on time. So everything that happens to us happens in really in that dynamic. We actually live on the river of time. Think about this. That river flows into the ocean of eternity. And on this river of time, we navigate ourselves. So wherever we are right now is the result of our navigation. Some of us have done a good job. Some of us have not done such a good job. The interesting thing is all of us fail at sometimes. <laughs> all of us are terrible captains at sometimes. So if you're on a bad road, don't beat yourself up. It's OK. Because the scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mary Pickford. I, I was speaking to a young group, and they were like, Mary Pickford, who's she singing with? <laughs> <laughs> Those of us who remember the silent movies. <laughs> Mary Pickford was a big silent movie star. <laughs> and she said something very powerful. She said, you may have a fresh start any moment you choose. And that's important to us, folks. 
Because if we're thinking of changing our lives, if we're not happy with where we are right now, and we want to make a new start, then as Mayor Pickford said, we can do it any moment we choose. So let's, I want to give a vision of a mountain. A mountain, a valley with trees, and then a mountain in the middle of that valley. And so life is really about how you exist. We exist in this, this forest, in this valley of trees, and there's a mountain. And basically, there are three kinds of people. They're the, the clingers. And these are people who live in the, in the valleys of life. They cling to whatever it is. So they may be in a bad situation, but they'll try to figure out ways to explain it. Complacency. They may be in a bad relationship, and they keep saying that, that person's going to change. <laughs> How's that working for you? <laughs> so the clingers are those folks who are happy with where they are. And I mean, we're all clingers at some time in life. Then you have the campers. Now, you've seen the pictures where they climb Mount Everest, and they always have a big group of people that they start climbing. So the clingers, they're in the forest. Most of them don't even know there's a mountain. <laughs> Their whole life is about trees, <laughs> obstacles, <laughs> things. <laughs> Very fundamental, basic life. But they're those who say, you know what? We were walking through the woods, and we saw this thing, and I think it's called a mountain. And that's the mountain of consciousness. And so when you see those movies about people climbing up the mountain, you notice they always begin with a big group. You know, they have 50 or 60 people going to climb Mount Everest. But as they go up that mountain, you have what we call the people who are the campers. They got a certain height on that mountain. And see, once you climb the mountain of consciousness, you can see more. You can literally see forever. Have you ever been to, um, what's that place in Colorado I went to? Um, Pikes Peak. And I, I didn't climb it. They have a little machine, a little train that takes you up there. <laughs> you, know, it's not, you, you know, you can use a little help to get to the top of the mountain. <laughs> but once you get there, and I looked, and they say on a good day you can see 150 miles. And it was, like, astounding. The lady who wrote America the Beautiful wrote it after she came down off that mountain. So as you're climbing that mountain, you can see more. And if you can see more, you can be more. But there are people in that group that start the campus, and they get to that base camp, and they're like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough. <laughs> and I can see the top of the trees, and there's a nice breeze. I'm good. <laughs> and that's OK, because you fit in. You get in where you fit in. The key is to always know it's your choice. You choose to be a clinger. You choose to be a camper. And as you go up that mountain, you know there are different base camps because life is lived in stages. You get to a certain level, everything seems fine. And then stuff happens. <laughs> Not just a pandemic, but just stuff happens. You may have an accident. You may have an illness. Somebody may do something to you. Stuff happens. That changes your whole dynamics. Then you got to have a new, a new start, a new revelation, and go to the next level. At the top of the mountain, you notice there are only like one or two people. Because it's only one or two, that 1%, that really have that burning desire to see beyond. They're like, if there's more, I want to see more. And when you get to the top of that mountain, you realize there are other mountains. There are higher mountains. And that's really what this is all about. The unity principle is about growth. We like to look at success as a continuous realization of a worthwhile purpose. So the more you can see, the higher you go up the level of consciousness, the more you can be. So. We are climbers. So let, let's say that together. I am a climber together. I am a climber. Let's say it like you mean it. I am a climber. So now that we have this dynamic in place, the question is, do you need to make a new start? That's really the question. Whether you're a clinger, a camper, or a climber. You know, everybody asks the same question. Everybody really wants to know what's next in life. What do I have to do to change my life? The climber says, all I got to do is convince myself that I'm OK. <laughs> the camper says, I'm good. <laughs> the clinger says, did I say the climber? No, the clinger says, 
convince themselves it's okay, but the climate is always growing. So the question arises, how do you know it's time to make a new start? The first key is your life is in a period of upheaval. Now, we don't have to make a confession, but if your life is in a period of upheaval, where you don't know where it's up or down, it may be successive failures. It may be disappointments. It may even be health challenges. It may be relationships that don't uplift you, don't embolden you, don't make you feel good. Just raise your hand inside. <laughs> Just raise your hand inside, just so that you'll know. Because that's the only important person to know, is that you know. So the key number one is that your life is in a period of upheaval. Number two, the second sign that you need a new, a new start is that you feel that you're at the end of your rope. Not only are you at the end of your rope, you know it. You know, <laughs> we can get to the end of our rope sometime, we pretend we're not there. I'm just hanging on. <laughs> it sure is nice here. <laughs> but when you get to the end of your rope and you know it, this is a big change. This is a major piece because this is where the change occurs. There's a story of a dog sitting on a porch when there are strangers walking by, and the dog is sitting on the porch, and the dog is whimpering and whining, and there's a man sitting there in the rocking chair. The stranger says, well, what's wrong with the dog? Why is he whimpering and whining? He says, because the dog's sitting on a nail. <laughs> he said, well, well, why doesn't the dog get off the nail? The man says, because it doesn't hurt badly enough. So sometimes we'll be sitting on a nail. And if you're sitting in a nail and you know you need to get off, just raise your hand inside. <laughs> I won't even give you no affirmations of power. I won't even give you an affirmation I'm sitting on a nail. You don't even want to affirm that. <laughs> okay. But once you know you're sitting on a nail, then you know you've got to change. You know you're at the end of your rope and you say, I'm committed. I change. The third sign that you need a change, that you want to make a new start, is you get tired of just surviving. I mean, there's a point, when you think about it, in, 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 in the Bible, Matthew says, John 10, chapter 10, it says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So we were not put here just to survive. But we can get so involved with the trees, with the valley, with our circumstances that all we're thinking about is bailing when we should be fixing the hole in the boat. <laughs> when you get to that point that you say, hey, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do better. In, the, in our book, in the Eighth Law of Success, the Law of Value, the law of value says you are worth more. Your time is worth more. Your thoughts are worth more. Your love is worth more. So focus not on your present condition, but see beyond on that mountain. See beyond to abundance. The fourth sign that you need a change in your life is when you realize your life is too small for your dreams. I was speaking once and somebody said, Dr. Harrison, what do you mean? But well, when your life is too small for your dreams, it's like you're talking in the path or walking in the grass. You know how people say, I want to get rich. I want to be successful. I want to have a company. I want to do this. And then they want to invest in education. <laughs> they won't go to school to learn how to get better, to do more, to understand more. Your dreams are seeded by your present. So your present life is the seed for your dreams. If that seed is not big enough, then you're under, undermining your dreams. The fifth sign that you need to make a new start is your soul is calling. You ever get to that point where there's something that says you got to do more, you got to be more, go one more time? Well, that's what this is about. We were created for a purpose. 
You think about the good Lord. I mean, we are the most complex creatures on the earth, really. Because we have the capacity to think and to choose and to do things. You know, as beautiful as the eagle is, he has not built one skyscraper. <coughs> so our soul is calling. There's something inside that tells you to be more, to do more, to change your life. Listen to it. We had that thing where something tells you to do it, and you just sometimes negativity of the past will keep you from making that move. Sometimes fear of failure will keep you from following your dreams. Sometimes fear of criticism. You know, you live around critical people, man. You, they start talking about your dreams, you're in danger. <laughs> they start throwing negativity on you. You're like, whoa, <laughs> forget this dream stuff. Follow your soul. And then finally, the sixth key to let you know it's time for a change is that feeling that you got to say yes. Say yes. Let's do it again. Say yes. Yes. Woo. When you say yes, the time is now. When we look at the signs around us, is your life in a period of upheaval? That's a sign. You need to make a change. You need to make a new start. I need to make a new start. Let's affirm that together. I need to make a new start. If you're at the end of your rope, and it's now or never, that's a sign. You need to make a new start. Let's affirm, if it's to be, it's up to me, together. If it's to be, it's up to me. When you're tired of merely surviving, when you, need to, when you feel that need to thrive, to have more. You know, sometimes you have more month at the end of the money. That's a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a clue. <laughs> you got to make a new start. And so we can affirm, I thrive together. I thrive. When your life is too small for your dream, when the, the seed that you're living in your life will not accommodate the bigness of your dreams, then you have to you are ready for a new start, and you can affirm, I live my dreams together. I live my dreams. When you feel that calling inside that it's time, you know, as you go up that mountain, the more you see, the more you be. The more you smell. You know, when you get up in the higher and the higher in the mountain, the air gets thin. You feel different. You get a little dizzy sometimes, you know. When you get on top of Pikes Peak, many, many people actually get sick. But when you feel that, that's when you say six steps. You say yes. Yes. I will change my thinking. Yes. I will change my emotions. Yes. I will change my habits. Yes. I will change my relationships. Woo. When you can do these things, then you're at that point in your life where you can truly say, I'm done. I'm ready. This change is on the way. It's happening right now. That I can be anything I want to be. That I can do anything I want to do. That I can have anything I want to have. That I can go anywhere I want to go. It's in my power. So I'd like to close with a, a reading from the book. You know, in, in, in our book, there's a little passage there, and we talk about who you really are. And it says this. Imagine yourself to be a great artist capable of creating a magnificent masterpiece. In addition to being the creator the artist, you are also the work of art being created. You are the masterpiece. You can create yourself through changing your self-image, through changing your emotions, through changing your habits, 
through changing your relationships to be anything you want to be. However, I must warn you, it is not easy and it may not be pretty, but then neither is being a caterpillar, ugly, bound to the earth and driven by hunger. Yet, if that caterpillar can go through a profound metamorphosis, a new start, it can become the most magnificent butterfly, free to follow the wind, fly to the sun, and realize your dreams. And so let us stand and affirm this together. This time it's me in the winner's circle. This time it's me who gets the prize. This time it's me who gets the prize. This time I've really, really made it. This time I've really, really made it. This time my dream is realized. This time my dream is realized. Whose dream? My dream. Whose dream? My dream. Whose dream? My dream. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you so much. Oh, it's time for the meditation. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let me, uh, I was trying to keep my time. You know, one of the beautiful things about the Unity Church is you can find whatever you need in 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> Some churches take an hour and a half. Some take three hours. <laughs> Ooh, Wow. Let us just sit straight up in our seats for a moment. Close our outer eyes and open our inner eyes. Put our hands palm down on our knees. Let's take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And in this moment of peace and oneness, I am. Let us affirm that together. I am at peace with myself. Once more, I am at peace with myself. And let that peace sink in as we see ourselves upon the mountain, the mountain of consciousness the mountain of light, the mountain of love. And as we see that mountain, mountain, let us look off into the distance. And in that distance, we see ourselves. See yourself smile. Full of joy. See yourself healthy, full of light. See yourself wealthy, full of abundance. See yourself. in this moment of realization of our oneness. 
me declare that I am that I am. Let us declare together. I am that I am. And in the spirit of grace and relaxation, we know from the depths of our being that we can be whatever we want to be, that we can do whatever we desire, we can have anything we wish, always know. Let us affirm together, the best is yet to come once more. The best is yet to come. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, sir. That's a hard act to follow, <laughs> if it is indeed. And it's an act and it's a time where we can pay back our generosity for being here and for having a place such as Unity to support us as we grow it. I would ask you to join me as we say our mudra. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. So it is. You can contribute here in person. You can contribute online through PayPal and Venmo. And thank you very much. And now, Heather.
Wow. All right. I will say it correctly. Please join me in the Aramaic Our Father. Father, Mother, Birther, and Breath of All, create a space inside us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then moves through ours as energy fills all forms. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment. Untangle the knots of error that bind us as we release others. Don't let appearances make us forgetful of the source, but free us to act appropriately. Age to age from you come the glorious harmony of life. May these statements be fertile ground from which our future grows. Amen and amen. Wow. Now it's time for the announcements. Uh, first of all, I wish to remind you that we have a prayer box. It's located over there. We pray in-house in for 30 days for all of your petitions and celebrations, and then we send it on to uh, Silent Unity, where it is again prayed for for another 30 days. Dr. Harris would be happy to pray with anyone who seeks it, and we have in-house prayer partners. Uh, who would I invite to stand? Sharon Hertner, Teresa, Reverend Ellen, and Chris. They are here to uh, support you in any way that they can. So please seek them out after the service and they will be happy to uh, pray with you. Uh, if you have not yet been getting the e-blast, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Please sign on because that's our way of communicating with everybody as much as we can considering how we communicate with everybody today, primarily online and email. There is a Facebook page and we invite you to look at that. We are in the process of um, integrating all of our online information, the e-blasts, the Facebook, and the website. So please take a look at it. Let us know what you think. If you have any ideas for it, please. We can use all the help we can get. Next Sunday is Super Sunday, and we will have an international theme. So whatever you would like to bring from wherever you would like it to be, please do so. And if it's got a recipe with it or a nationality attached to it, identify it so we know a little bit of what we're eating. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I would also invite you to mark your calendars for July. Those of you who were here a couple weeks ago when Reverend Eliza was here know that it was a very interesting weekend that we spent with her. She will be coming back in July on the 16th. So please mark your calendars and mark the day because we invite you to participate. We're going to be de delving deeper and discovering why we want to make that fresh start and where we're going to be going with it. So this is a very timely message right now. Uh, the speakers for June next Sunday will be Dr. David Hiller, and then uh, Catherine Klein, and then Reverend Ellen will be the end of the month. Hospitality Time is looking for some more volunteers. Uh, we need people for the third, uh, third weekend to participate, one or two people. And then secondly, or looking for more people, this is part of the board minute. First of all, I wish to celebrate. We have been here three months surviving without the reverends. And I wish to congratulate us and honor us for our perseverance, for our humor, and for our support, all of us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're doing a good job. So thanks to the board, thanks to the leadership, and thanks to the congregation. We're here and we're going on. The board is looking for, the prosperity team, those are the money makers and the money counters, are looking for one or two more members, people who have some familiarity with budgeting, fundraising, um, can count straight. <laughs> Please contact me afterwards and let me know that you would be interested and we'll see if we can 
I allow you to join us because there, there needs to be a few more creative processes. So having said all that, let's do our closing song. Thank you all for being here, and God bless us. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. And I forgot one thing. Dr. Harris's book is on the table for, for sale in the lobby. It is $15, and he will be contributing part of that to the church, back to the church, which is terrific on his part. Thank you again all. So let us sing the peace song. <laughs>